So, so we'll, we'll, we'll get going. Thanks a lot. I think, um, um, uh, frankly, for me, um, um, uh, I was kind of pulled into this panel a little later, but it was, uh, I would say, wonderful to study what each one of you are doing and what each of your firms are doing. My ignorance is that I didn't know as much, um, clearly saying, Vikram, I know you're the younger part of the, uh, clearly saying that I'm another part of the generation, but I was extremely happy to see the good work which all of you are putting in. So. Um, um, it's a small audience, small panel, so uh, once again, anywhere you want to kind of stop the discussion, please feel free. We're not going to really wait till the very end for any questions, right? Uh, so uh, let's get going. I think uh, um, uh, the, the discussion is innovation. Um, did you come across any innovation today? Just a question to the audience. Anything which really s took your imagination saying, wow, that is innovation. Let's begin. There's a strong no. Yeah, just share the, share that with us. It'll be great. Uh huh. Wonderful. So let's give him a big hand. Yes, I think you liked it. Superb. Okay. So where did you see it? today? You saw it. Yes. Okay. Superb. Any other innovation? And people who nodded saying no. Even I want to hear from them. Yeah. Any other innovation? Sure. You heard, you saw some innovation. Huh. Sorry, uh, Mike will help, yeah. So, uh, the, I, I, I think your names will help us so the audience gets yeah. to know. Sorry, I didn't ask you your name, sir. Okay, Madhu, right. Thank you. I'm Prashant Charate representing Blue Dart. Uh -huh. So, the new thing which we, I saw that if you scan this, then you, the coordinates of other person and you can directly mail him. That was something, wow, which uh, I, on the first day of this program I got to know. That was great. Will you be delivered on time in full? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. We have, we have uh, maintained that promise every time. Okay. So, no sure. See, Thank I'll let you. you make your brand pitch also. <laughs> okay, any, any other innovation? Backbenchers. And I want the mic to go to that lady that you nodded no. I want to know why did you nod your head no? Huh? Yeah. So, I think I've actually heard a lot of, I mean, this is my first day here. And yep. whatever I heard was just stuff that I'm already dealing with. So I'm actually waiting for some solutions. Hopefully in this uh, chat, I'll get to know okay, something. You want to park one or two questions so that we kind of keep it at the back of our mind? Things which keep you awake, problems, pain points. For me, <laughs> that keeps me, like that keeps me going actually. But returns for Sorry, me, you didn't introduce yourself. Uh, so my name is Zisha. I run a D2C women's footwear company called Eridani. And for footwear, the biggest challenge is returns. So that is the thing that keeps me up at night. Okay. So possibly we're going to ask the panelists that we'll just make it on the spot. Perfect. That's the only problem you have, footwear returns? Right now, yes. It's the biggest one. Demands happening, cracking. Yeah, the Super. demands happening. Good show. Yeah, any, any other innovation which anyone saw? No? So, okay, let's jump into the panel then. And so, uh, my, my, uh, my take, I, 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 like she mentioned, and I'm glad you said that, and you mentioned unboxing, you mentioned, or other wrapping, you mentioned a pain point, you mentioned uh, identification. So, frankly, I, I, I genuinely believe innovation can be coming in the smallest of pieces. I think. Um, we, we used to often quote, you know, um, I, I've been in a physical form of retail and the innovation at times would come from surprisingly small parts of the company, right? Uh, my example, I'm sure sharing a very trivial innovation, but it's important. Uh, where, where the, my first lesson in the toys category when I was with a hypermarket retail called Big Bazaar was uh, this person who was uh, a salesman who was not, who was physically challenged and he told me, let me tell you how to sell toys and, and I, I was doing my internship, not internship, I was eight years into the company but just be going in a market visit. He gave me some two, three tricks which still resonate with me. I mean, you, you have a kid coming into the toy section, you just throw a ball at the person. So he'll throw it back, throw it again, throw it back. Third time you drop it saying, oh, I missed. The ball is sold. Because the, the boy suddenly feels I won this game and he'll say, mama, I made a ball. Chahiye. So think simple things like that and we, I actually saw him sell balls footballs and volleyballs like no one, nothing before, right? And then uh, right from there to selling um, rice, upgrading people from rice, and those were my examples of innovation. I'm sure at home, uh, we've seen our moms and our sisters and our brothers and our fathers bring small, small innovation at the dining table or at the kitchen. So frankly, to me, innovation 
yes, it's an English word, it's an MBA word, but frankly, it's about what I'm sure all of you are doing, and when we discover each of the businesses, uh, I'm sure all of you will realize. So since we are lesser as a panel, I would request you to take a little time talking about your business and also boasting about it. Uh, um, I'm sure the media is carrying it uh, as well. Um, so I'm going to start with a provocative question. I think innovation is something which I guess, I mean, uh, innovation obviously should cause a lot of brand love, it should cause a lot of affection. And what is it one thing, hypothetically, and I wish it never happens to you in your businesses, but hypothetically if a brand was to vanish from the space, what is it one or two things which your core customer is going to miss? And to me that's a real sign of innovation. If you say nothing, and we'll still clap for you, but then maybe there's no innovation. So I'm going to ask a question open to anyone, whoever wants to go in first. If you really dealt in innovation, what is it, one or two things? Should your brand vanish tomorrow? What is your customer going to say, ye kya ho gaya? What, this, I'm going to miss this. So what, your question is, what, your, what are your core customers going to miss in your brand? Anyone can go for it. Sure. So I represent a band called U Foods. Uh, uh, just to give you a broad introduction, we're, we're a consumer packaged foods brand providing instant food to consumers. Uh, we're, we're one of the first brands in the country that, that provide instant food, which is chef-crafted with zero preservatives, right? So, uh, and a lot of people say zero preservatives in food these days, but uh, when, when we say zero preservatives, it's across right from the ingredient level to the process to the actual recipes to the point that you are actually packaging it. Uh, you know, we're, we're absolutely zero preservatives, zero artificial ingredients, uh, uh, zero flavor enhancers, uh, only natural recognizable ingredients. Uh, to take a step back, food has always been about taste. Uh, I think for any uh, food startup to succeed, for any consumer foods brand to succeed, uh, taste plays paramount importance. Uh, within that particular segment, if we were to talk about instant food, uh, this particular segment is particularly more price sensitive. I think, I think that is uh, something that we've witnessed over the last uh, 24 months since the time that we've been, uh, you know, doing our research and we've been in the market now for about 18 months. Um, keeping these two pillars in mind, one is taste and the other one being uh, the price conscious uh, consumer. Uh, we've, we've reimagined the concept of packaged foods by making it 100% uh, natural, uh, you know, like I said, and, and making it as good as any other packaged food without adding any artificial flavor enhancers. Uh, we use our advanced food science technology that allows us to preserve food without adding anything unnatural to it. <clears throat> so in an industry which is, uh, I would say, infamous for, for not being that healthy, uh, this is a better for you alternative. You brings a better for you alternative uh, in the packaged food industry while keeping the uh, price and, and the taste uh, at peak. So I think, I think this is the void that we're trying to fill and, and I think if somebody were to, if you were to vanish, which I, I, I hope it doesn't happen, uh, I think the whole concept of there being now an option for an end consumer, um, especially for, for the younger generation of, of this country, the aspirational generation of this country, uh, I think this is a this is the one and only option right now. So I think this is what they would miss the most. Sure. And uh, your response here, thanks for that. But it's triggered one more question. We're going to park. But let me put that question to you right now. But we'll uh, take it up later. You're clearly distinguishing, saying the younger generation of customers. So are you sharp focused in saying I don't want to talk to many others? So I want to park that question with you, and we'll come back to you. Arjun, what 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 are customers going to miss? Then mirchi to niklegi. Mirchi lagi to. I mean, um, I, think, I think the one part uh, that people will absolutely miss is the experimentation in, in the chili side of things. Um, I can speak for myself, is like we used to buy red chili sauce, green chili sauce, keep it in the fridge, no one would touch it, 12 months pass, 14 months pass, then you look at it and you realize it expired two months ago, you throw it in the trash, next day the next version comes. Um, and it just sits there again because it's just always part of your fridge, right? So what we wanted to change is this idea that it's just something that needs to be there. Like we wanted it to be something that you love, something that you enjoy. So I think that that's something that people will miss. I think the better way to contextualize this perhaps is um, I like to liken this process maybe to um, sort of what happened with beer in the country. 
Um, I don't know how many people here remember a time when all you got was like, I don't know, those Hayward's ads on TV and like Kingfisher and that was it, right? And then somewhere along the way, Bira came in and then started like trying to make craft beer and artisanal beer sexy. And then the next thing you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry or every Ramesh, Prakash and Rahul, you know, has decided to start making their own versions of beer. And like, even if Bira dies, there's going to be no shortage of a million people looking to come up with some amazing beer. And I think that's a testament to a larger change in the industry where it's just like we're not going to just take the two things that we got available. And there is a permanent change here. Like people are going to be looking for it. So rightly or wrongly, I'd like to believe that we're kind of doing a little bit of that for hot sauce. And even if we die, I'd like to believe that there's enough going on here where there's people who are going to come in and take the next step and take it forward. If I'm going to be shameless here, I'd say there's a couple of uh, competitors that have come in and started using our wrong spelling of certain words, which makes me really happy because it feels like they're defining their product through us. That makes me really happy. I get a cheap thrill out of that. But yeah, like I think that's sort of, um, I think that's sort of like where, what we are super excited about. Um, Ek yeah. wrong spelling to bata dije. Brand ka naam bale nahi uh, booth. Um, the, the actual spelling would be B-H-U-T um, for and then Booth Jalokia. And we decided to call our product the uh, Smoky Booth and then now you're just seeing like people be writing Booth with two O's like it's normal but it's not. Um, so I know where that's coming from but like yeah. It, at it least, is at it least is. in your case they're changing the spelling. In our case they're not even changing the spelling. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Pure rip-offs is where it's at. <laughs> okay. Abhijit. And I think a little introduction to your business would be great. Sure, 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 sure. So, Abhijit, uh, I'm the co-founder of a brand called Kanya. Um, Kanya comes from the word Panch Kanya, which is the goddess of courage. And uh, what better profession to really talk about courage than medical professionals? Uh, we're a performance apparel brand for doctors and nurses in this country. Um, the life expectancy of doctors in India is 59 versus the life expectancy of non-doctors is 71. 75% of doctors get attacked at least once in their professional career. Let me just let these two pieces of statistics just like stay in this room for a moment. These are the so-called people who help us cure all kinds of diseases, save lives, protect each of us and our families. Uh, so that's, we, we started this business uh, 18 months back with the pure intent of celebrating medical professions in this country. Um, and our way was to kind of come up with the most fashionable, functional apparel for them. The average doctor basically works 18 to 20 hours a day before the age of 30, right? So, and they wear the same drab, boxy clothes. So we're looking to change that. And it's been a great journey for us the last 18 months. And we've been able to partner with several institutes, several medical professionals themselves. And we are lucky with the feedback that we've received. Uh, but to answer your question, right, on um, what would they miss? So I'd like to believe it's the product. But besides the product, right, uh, the scrub that they wear, I think it's the content we create. Uh, we have more than two and a half lakh subscribers on YouTube, uh, making us one of the largest medical pages in the country. Um, and um, almost five crore organic views every month on our page. And uh, we just create really relatable, fun content. And um, I think a um, lot of us here are insurgent brand founders. Um, try not to use the word D2C because um, I think it's omni-channel. Um, but I think the thing with, um, uh, with, thing with uh, insurgent brands is I think creating trust is very important. Now, there are multiple ways you can create trust, right? One is obviously creating innovative products. Second is maybe packaging. Third is probably operational efficiency and kind of hand-holding the customer till they get their product, till they exchange it, to getting feedback. But we think one very important level in 2023 is content. And I think we are very lucky to be living in a generation with incredible distribution mechanisms through Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and et cetera. And if you're able to kind of create content that people appreciate, the feedback loop is pretty quick, right? And I think that's very lucky in today's day and age. Um, so we've used that this as a medium to kind of create trust and kind of communicate a lot of our products and awareness regard to our category. Since we 
really know who our audience is, right? And um, so that's been something which I think our consumers would miss because I think that's something that we as a team have been able to get right. But it's be lovely being here and with phenomenal panelists here. Thank you. Sure. And I'm going to park a question with you, Abhijit, and we'll take it later. Did you ever get any comments saying, isn't this too frivolous? Yeah, I mean, if you want to go yeah. for it now, please go. Yeah. Uh, but did you get that feeling saying those serious? So, so when you say frivolous, meaning like I mean, this it's is a serious, serious profession, yeah. why should they be wearing like And why should they be producing scrubs? content like that? And so yeah. did you ever yeah. get that feeling? And so I wish you've not, but... It's a ask. great question. And um, so I'm very involved in content strategy yet. Uh, although we've kind of scaled a bit in the last couple of years. Uh, it's because I feel that... Um, Put that, putting out sensitive content that is kind of where people appreciate it is very important, right? And um, we so far haven't got it, but I think it's something that we think about very closely, sure. right? There's this, there's this very um, unfortunate incident that happens in, in hospitals all the time in medical colleges, right? That women doctors are sometimes called Didi, right? Uh, nothing wrong with Didi. Uh, it sometimes it means sister, right? But Doc, women doctors feel like, why should we be called um, Didi when we've kind of earned the title doctor? Just Is it because we are women, right? Um, there are kind of, um, I would say, angles like this that if not catered well, and if not kind of handled in a sensitized way, can kind of really rub medical professionals the wrong way, right? And I think um, although we create funny content and serious content, um, it's something that we think about a lot. How would this land? And we kind of have like a small focus group of maybe like 50, 60 medical professionals, maybe loyal customers, VIP customers, you call it, where we bounce off a lot of our ideas, not just on product development, but even content on how would it land? But we'll find it funny because maybe a doctor in northeast part of India may find it funny, but maybe in Bangalore may not find it funny. Like we live in a very diverse country. Right? And with regard to kind of our products, sometimes we do a lot of our products, best selling products are kind of fun colors, right? Maybe like a hot pink or maybe like a, a pastel lilac. And sometimes we get asked that, is it okay to wear like hot pink while doing a pediatric surgery? And our answer is why not, right? Uh, if as an athlete, if you can wear kind of whatever you want to work or we, I can see a lot of diversity of colors in this audience, why can't medical professions do the same? And I think that's what their thought is as well. They're very closeted individuals, which unfortunately haven't got a chance to kind of express themselves. And we've seen that um, through our products that people have been able to kind of express themselves by wearing diverse outfits. We're yet young in our journey, so we're yet learning. But I think it's a great question, something that we need to kind of be even more careful as we scale. Sure, but I, I wish you never killed that spirit because I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yep. But, but there's this whole impression saying, why should a doctor smile? Yep. <laughs> I think yep. he should smile. Right? Absolutely. Or Absolutely. she should smile. Absolutely. Vikram, what, what, what are people going to miss? And I asked him, why is this brand called Ajwain? He says, Ajwain as in Ajwain. So now please go ahead and tell, what will okay. people miss? Uh, <clears throat> to all the new audience who didn't hear me in the morning. Oh. Uh, I'm the founder of a brand, of a watch brand. Uh, I could call it a quirky watch brand called Ajwain. Uh, the elongated form is analog jeweled watches and instruments network. But uh, as an afterthought, I prefer to call it a jeweled watch without an interesting name. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, as far as we concerned, and uh, uh, if I can peep into the mindset of my customers, every time we have a watch coming out, they expect us to pull out a rabbit out of the hat. Okay and do something wow, and uh, raise the bar each time that we brought out a new edition of a watch. So that's the kind of expectations that we've set for ourselves and that's got translated to the customer. Uh, <coughs> regret nahi hai na? There's no regret. Pardon? There's no regret. No, no, no. The, the idea is to keep on challenging yourself. Absolutely. Uh, one very important thing that customers would miss out if uh, we moved out was, Normally you experience when you go to buy a particular watch in a watch store as you will see it in the showroom, the watch uh, case, dial, hands, a particular color, strap, a particular color, and normally that is how you can buy it. He will not allow you to change anything. Uh, we, and since we were experimenting, uh, when I designed a particular watch, I, I had some, a particular picture in mind, the dial should look white, 
uh, have blue color hands, have this X, Y, Z and that is what we were designing. But uh, as an afterthought decided yeah, let's do some experimentation. So we said let's have a black dial. Uh, watch characters whom we normally address, 95% of them or even 98% of them want a steel case watch. They don't want a gold plated watch. They don't prefer a black PVD watch, 95 to 98%. Uh, but we wanted to experiment because I personally like gold plated watches. So we experimented, we said fine, let's try 10 cases in GP, 10 cases in black PVD. So we found out sources. The best part is we were able to get some fantastic processes done on it and it was something which was long term. Uh, we launched the watch first, normal steel case and then as a, as a teaser we left out another uh, photograph of a watch with a GP case. Suddenly orders started coming for that. Then we left out a teaser for a watch with a black case. Wo aana shuru ho gaya. Kar, ab thoda sa aur interesting karte hai. We gave everybody the option. Now you got three hands in a watch, hour, minute and a second hand. We said why don't you customize the hands. So you could have a red color hour hand, a black color minute hand and a golden color second hand. And trust me people went berserk. So everybody want, had certain uh, color combination in mind. It became a headache for us, but trust me, the, the kind of feedback that we got from the customer when we delivered a watch with what he wanted. So I'm sure people will miss that. So uh, most of our watches, uh, you have the possibility of customization. In fact, for our straps, we actually give the customer an option. Okay, this is the watch you decide from our inventory. Uh, which particular strap you want, we'll supply your watch with that particular strap. Be happy. That's the whole objective. We don't want you to spend unnecessarily money on buying another strap. Uh, <coughs> so the result of that particular uh, series that we did of uh, 100 watches, we were very surprised. We had an equal percentage of gold-plated, black and steel watches which were sold. So it's good to think out of the box. It helps. Uh, so personalization is what they're going to miss. Personalization is definitely what they'll miss. Okay. So, so the messages I picked up, and happy to hear the audience as well, but uh, uh, advocacy, good, goodness, uh, maybe empathy, and personalization. I think these are four things which they believe they packed in. And I just made these words up listening to what they had to share. These are possibly four things which people are going to miss should these brands not exist and we, are, we know we are never going to wish that for them. This is just a hypothetical one. So maybe round one is over. Can we have a big round of applause for them? Yeah. Yeah. That was classic post-afternoon ka taliyan. Thodai zordar ek taliyan bajaiye please. So uh, Bharat, I'm going to start with you on the second one. I think um, and the whole idea was to really take six panelists, take up one one issue, one one topic which may impact um, innovation and maybe you'll hopefully answer the one on returns as well but really Bharat for you had kept um, for no rhyme or reason competition yeah and innovation obviously is always meant to we've been taught saying it's meant to get a competitive edge yeah I think if, if when you look at your portfolio in new foods I think it's really you're competing with multinational uh, food companies uh, in the space of pasta noodles and then the I think you launched Nariel Pani maybe the street vendor right um, what is the real competitive lens which you do? I mean, do, when you sit down with the team in NPD or innovation, do you really go out and say, humko unse better banna hai? Is it really a very sharp, aggressive, competitive lens? And the second is linked to this, which is possibly what uh, he answered in his response to the earlier one. So is your life really about gaining share? Ki in log noodle ka market banayenge, hum unme se thoda goodness se apni taraf liayenge? Or is it really about getting a new customer in? And both to me are equally tough challenges. So first one really is about how do you kind of make sure you build a competitive lens in your innovation funnel and second, are you really here to gain share or build categories? No, no, very good question. Um, let's rewind to how we started. Um, you know, when you was born and we spent about 12 months in research even before we, we launched our first product and launched our brand in October of 2021, um, our idea was to always do so when we talk about innovation at its core at you foods uh, there are two things that we focus on number one if we feel 
that we can make a product available to an end consumer that is going to solve a pain point that uh, is not available you know by any other brand today we will attempt that if we feel we can do something uh, to solve a certain uh, problem to, to, to actually give an option to an end consumer that he or she would enjoy uh, we would attempt that that's number one uh, and that's from the core of uh, the launch of our product so we we started off by doing pastas in a, in a bowl uh, at a time where uh, you know most of this ready to eat kind of category is dominated by noodles if you see uh, and and a couple of players had tried their hands at pasta before this but they said you know this this uh, category in the ready to eat doesn't really work it's it's largely dominated by noodles um, and and after 12 months of research we launched uh, you know pastas in, in a box uh, it's now one of our top selling SKUs uh, it's onboarded onto SpiceJet and Akasa and a lot of these airlines. We're an omni-channel brand now, and it's it's uh, you know uh, we've been fortunate. So so if we believe that we can do something uh, that solves a problem for an end consumer, uh, we attempt that. We're we're the first to introduce halwa in a box. Uh, we do a gajar ka halwa and a moong dal halwa in a box. When we attempted that, they said, "Who is going to eat a halwa out of a box?" Uh, we said, "You know what." We actually made a great product, and it's you know we really want to try with something like this today. Uh, if we talk to end consumers, there are a lot of people, and and going back to your question, you know, in terms of the age demographic, there are a lot of people. Uh, I was once at uh, you know a friend's place, and and her daddy actually said, you know, अब तो हम घर पे हलवा ही नहीं बनाते. हम तीन मिनट में आपका हलवा लेते हैं, और जब भी हमारे कोई घर आता है, वही बनाते हैं. So this just goes to show that if you make a product which is good and you believe in it uh, and there is a market for something like that we would definitely kind of do that uh, and there is also a second aspect to this uh, and and this is where we also develop products uh, i'll take the case in point of of noodles because we we started off as a company doing um, pastas oats halwas and and the demand actually came from retailers and consumers they said you know this is a really good concept why don't you do noodles why don't you try our handed noodles? We we definitely want to see a noodle come out from a brand like yours. And noodles, if you see, especially in the cup format, everybody's eaten cup noodles at some point of time, definitely during your flights. Uh, so so we said, what is it that we can do differently uh, in a in a in a cup noodle that has been around for a hundred odd years, originated in Japan, uh, dominated by Southeast Asian countries, and it's largely been this soupy noodle that exists in the market. Uh, we took our own spin at it. Uh, today we do India's first saucy noodle. It's something that we launched in uh, June of 2022, uh, again after doing uh, six months of research. And we said India likes, there's no need for us to do what everybody else is doing uh, from a cup noodle perspective. So we were the first to launch uh, noodles in a saucy format, which is like a, say we do a Manchurian. So we actually noodles cooked in a Manchurian sauce. Uh, which is something that you enjoy when you're actually, you know, going to a Chinese restaurant, for example. Uh, so so uh, doing things in a particular category, but doing things differently, catering to a certain, uh, say, I would say an Indian palate, but then also westernizing it, right? So in a way, today, uh, the food that you actually do, I think the biggest opportunity that exists for food today, uh, and I, I don't think we fully utilized it. Today, if you see Indian cuisine, uh, fragrances, flavors, spices, are amongst the best in the world, right? Yet, packaged food is dominated by uh, countries in Southeast Asia. Why? Why is it that an Indian country with all the flavors and spices that we have cannot kind of Indianize that particular flavor and export to the world? And we are trying to change that one step at a time. So these are things that we are working on. Uh, very proud to say we've, we've now launched across 6,000 stores in South Africa as a market. Uh, and yeah. catering to uh, not only Indians in South Africa, it's catering to uh, you know the the African community there. It's catering to the white community there, and it makes us extremely proud because you know at the end of the day we are promoting Indian cuisine, Indian flavors uh, in its best form, uh, westernizing it in a certain way, uh, in a fusion format, and presenting it to the world. So, so I think there's a there's a host of opportunities sure. that exist uh, for for uh, food brands uh, that that you know we are trying to capitalize on. Uh, so I think that answers sure. your yeah, first yeah. question. So, uh, if, if I have to distill my response, I think there's competition as a, somewhere there, 
but you're not chasing it necessarily. You're rather resting on your own strengths about and your own convictions. We are, we are focused on our own products. Yeah. And I think, see, there are certain categories that we automatically gain market share. Like I sure. said, cup noodles, it's, it's something that we've, we've been there across uh, platforms where we've pre been present now for about a year. We occupy a 25% market share in, in a period of, say, six months, which is sure. great. Uh, and then there are new categories that we are leading with. So it's a mixture of both. Sure. O okay, a snap poll for him, for Bharat. Uh, what are the two, three foods you'd like him to work on next? Just random ones, please. Yeah, go for it. Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> Sir, pizza for you. Uh, any other, any other? I'm going to charge him some money for this poll now. <laughs> yeah, any other ideas? Sorry? Any other, any other thoughts? No other ideas for Bharat? I, I loved your uh, halwa thought. Huh? I really loved your halwa thought. It's good. So let's move on. And if you feel any time you need to put, put up your hand and give a product, it's good. We'll move to you, Abhijit. Um, what's his brand called, by the way? You managed it. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> good show. Okay, so, uh, and Abhijit, I think whatever question I had for in mind, I think you really answered it in my first part, but I'm going to still ask you that, which is really, I think, it's a great place. I, I, I don't know how, it, how this thought came to you, but to really take a functional part of apparel and then add convenience, ease, um, and fashion as well in some form. Okay, we may not like the word fashion, but looking good, yep. right? A uh, little bit of aspiration there. So, my take to you is who are your panel, who is your, how are your eyes and ears to the market? How do you manage? You mentioned somewhere a panel of 50 co-customers, etc., etc. Yeah. That's one part, but since we didn't have the other panels, I'm going to put one more question to you. I think you're possibly on this panel, uh, a person who has to go navigate through the B2B channel as well. Uh, so the buyer could be someone else, the user could be someone else, the sponsor could be someone else, the payment could be coming from someone else altogether. So for Kanya, how do you kind of navigate this? Yeah. Um, in, and, and really, I mean, we're not really going to speak out go-to-market, but what's the innovation you brought yeah. in there? Have you thought of something which makes things easier, frictionless? Yeah. So really, one, who's your eyes and ears for your NPD? And then how do you kind of manage the navigation within B2B yeah. channels? Yeah. Uh, so, so we are in a category which um, is relatively new, relatively different than I think most of my panelists or people who've been speaking here, right? And um, so when we kind of thought of kind of what we were doing, building Kanya, um, we realized that the DNA of the company will have to be set in a particular way on being open to feedback, right? And the culture will have to be such, right? Um, traditionally, if any of you have been to a hospital, I hope not, but unfortunately, we, our family members keep going to hospitals, right? You see more often than not people wearing blue, green, really like, unironed, very drab, boxy <laughs> scrubs, right? Uh, they're not Kanya scrubs, right? <laughs> but, uh, and we wanted to change that. We wanted people to feel good about themselves, these doctors to feel good about themselves when they get into it, right? Um, why should only a stethoscope be like a mark of the profession, right? Um, and uh, I think so far we've been able to may maybe make a little bit of achievement in the past, uh, um, I would say how many of months we've been out there, right? And our kind of customers have been happy with it. Um, so to answer your question, I think we've tried to create a culture around that. Um, I'll give you a couple of hacks on how kind of we think we've been open to it. Um, now, one thing I, that I realize is very important in all our lives is feedback. I think feedback is the biggest gift you can give anybody in life. Honestly, except for your partner and maybe your parents, I don't think anybody gives you feedback real feedback, right? And real feedback meaning like, this just doesn't look good or body odor or whatever, right? It just doesn't happen, right? And especially in today's day and age, I don't think customers do that. But I think we tried, as an organization try to be, keep all channels open so that customers can write to us, tell us of that feedback loop. Couple of examples, right? We have a decent sized customer service team, customer delight team, we're available across channel, right? Maybe WhatsApp, social media, email, calls, for people to write to us whether they like the product, whether they have any feedback on any products we can potentially come up with, right? And how do we track this? The standard customer service metrics, like first call resolution, 
average time to respond, et cetera. We have an entire quality team that is listening to these conversations, including me. I, every lunch of mine, 25 minutes, is just listening to calls of customers kind of calling and telling us what they like, what they didn't like, the delay in dispatch, issue in product, what they like, what they didn't like. By setting in systems like this, it kind of lets customers reach out to us. And as a culture, it's not just the customer services team's job to kind of get feedback. I think it's everybody's, all the way from the founder to the social media intern, to be listening. It's the fancy terms today in today's day and age, online reputation management, we call it social media listening, right? L read comments, see what customers are posting, see what their comments are, because these tidbits kind of tell us what the brand can be and how we can create trust with the organization. One simple hack. Um, I was very fortunate to do my MBA at Stanford, right? And I took this organizational behavior class. And uh, they are more often than not say that you don't listen, learn much in school, right? But I, I remember this particular aspect, right? Uh, there's this uh, organizational behavior psychologist um, called Robert Cialdini, uh, if you have an incredible guy, right? And he talks about the seven principles of influence. And there are two pieces which we kind of use in our day to day. One is, publicly committing to something makes the person be more sticky. So when our customer service team ends the call of somebody who's doing pre-sales, somebody who's calling about a, customer, about a product, always ends by, dear sir, dear ma'am, dear doctor, um, if you don't mind, would love for you, would you mind uh, leaving us feedback after using the product? Right, that, and when the person says yes, they've kind of committed publicly. And we've seen the uptick in almost 60, 70% of leaving feedback. Similar to what Sir mentioned and what, what he saw at Big Basket, right? Another principle is reciprocity, right? The, the ball example. If you kind of give somebody something first, they believe that they owe you something, right? So that's like you've kind of got the upper hand in the transaction in some sense, right? So these minor kind of techniques I feel have kind of in some sense, hack the way we kind of look at consumer experience and gaining feedback. And I think it's been pretty powerful. And as mentioned, right, we are dealing with colleges, hospitals, purchase departments, consumers, across the board. And I feel um, being consistent in our communication kind of helps us stay true to our brand and also kind of navigate um, unconventional channels, which we need to do, unlike some of my contemporaries on the panel. And how do you navigate B2B? Um, so I think uh, we, tr we are trying to look at B2B um, not like traditional pharmaceutical ways where you have kind of feet in the street, people just knocking on purchase doors. We believe that we want to create a brand and we kind of have kind of in some sense created customer delight, inside sales, however you call it. So we actually, nobody goes to purchase people, right? We supply to some of the larger hospitals in the country. Narayana Health, Reliance HN, Just Look, some of the names here, right? And um, but all of them have been broken through them coming to us. They've reached out to us. The conversation is just very different because their user probably was using our product. They learned about us. So the conversation is very different. So we really don't have any sales team. We have zero salespeople. It's just people reaching out to us. So it academically may sound like, oh, wow, is, is that even possible? But we feel that was the only way to really create a brand. If we start going to them and haggling on price, you're not really creating a brand here. Sure. Sure. So since you ended up by saying haggling on price, I'm going to go to sure. Vikram next on value as a perception. And Vikram, I'm, I was reading about you. I think your whole idea came out of a personal rejection. That's what you mentioned. Correct. So maybe you could make a brief mention of that as well and how this idea of Ajwain came into picture. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is really two things. One, um, like the fact that you called it Ajwain asked, what is Ajwain? So, <laughs> so there's, uh, I think, inherent in your proposition is storytelling. So what is the role of storytelling which you want to leave behind for all the participants here? And in your case, because it's pertaining to a category like watches, how do you go about deciding which features to add, what is the product mix to make sure the value perception is good? And I think I'm glad Abhishek gave me the entry into that part because we may end up creating the best product, but if it is viewed as beyond my reach, what do we do? Great. Thanks for bringing up that. Uh... So the idea of starting or making my own watches started off with, uh, with a friend of mine on Facebook telling me that uh, he would remove me from the a watch collector Facebook group. And I asked him, why would you want to remove me? He said, because now you are a seller. 
Uh, it so happened that I started off as an HMT watch collector, uh, got a bit bored of it, somehow managed to get a cache of watches, uh, then I was trading watches. Some people got upset because uh, they couldn't manage to get a watch from me, whatever things happened. And so they triggered him and told him, why don't you remove him from the group? So I just turned around and asked him, you, you telling me that I'm a seller, that's the reason you, you're taking me out of the group. Vikram, can you just keep the mic a little? Oh, close? sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I said, what if I create my own brand of watches? In that case, I don't think you'll have the guts to remove me. So he just kept quiet and that's what triggered the thought of making watches, okay? So uh, this gentleman's name was Prashant Pandey, okay? Uh, he was the evangelist for HMT watches. Uh, incidentally, he died in 2021, courtesy COVID. Uh, there was a particular watch that he, want, he had designed, he wanted us to make it, uh, but when he was alive and the kind of high-end specifications that he had given us, I said, sorry, the kind of numbers that you're talking, it's not going to be feasible for us to make it. Uh, after his death, his wife asked me that, uh, are you aware of this? I said, yes, I'm aware, and I told him no. She said, can you do that for us? So I said, fine, let, let's do it. So uh, we pulled up, <coughs> we pulled all the strings that were possible because uh, we were asked to make only 100 watches, and uh, you can't do 100 watches especially with the current scenario that the industry, Indian watch industry runs in. So we pulled a lot of strings, we managed to bring that watch, that watch is called Malhar. It's, it's actually nearly sold out, okay? Uh, so <coughs> that was how I started off into watches. Now coming to the part of storytelling, uh, a very simple thing which, uh, which I threw to myself is now somebody who wants to buy a watch. Why would he buy a watch from a, from a brand called Ajwain? I have had many customers who said, boss, I love your watch, I love everything. Oh, but what is Ajwain? So, many tell me, boss, I'll buy the watch, I'll pay you double. Oh, upar se logo nikal de. <laughs> so, at times, we, we have uh, listened to them, but that's not because uh, of the brand that we are, uh, because we are very proud of what we do, but depending on what is the uh, watch that we're creating, or what is the idea that we're trying to put forward to a customer, like now we've made a brand of watches called Khaki. Now Khaki definitely, and it, the inspiration comes from how the word originated from the Indian Army. So that's a much bigger idea than Ajwain. So Ajwain comes down at the bottom, is a very small, sure. at six o'clock. So Khaki takes the uh, <coughs> main stage. Uh, so the uh, coming back to why would somebody want to buy an Ajwain watch is there has to be something a value proposition. Now we are definitely not a Rolex, okay? Uh, we are not a jacket Rolls where you have an automata and people see that beautiful watch and see it working or one of those erotic watches from Ulis Nadi. We are not anything like that. My simple thought was, now let's assume for a minute somebody uh, is rich enough to buy a Rolex. And he goes to a party, definitely he shares, he has his watch on his wrist. Uh, he'll talk to his, his colleagues, friends around, and what will he say? Okay, I'm wearing a Rolex. The other person at the other hand uh, might say congratulations, or he would perhaps show his wrist, he might be wearing a more expensive watch. Uh, but there isn't much that you would be able to talk about it. Fine. You would have different feelings. Somebody will, would feel equal. Somebody would try to show that he's got something better or feel a bit jealous because you're wearing a Rolex, but I'm not. Okay? So I said, we don't want to do anything like that. We want to have a conversation starter. So each watch of ours has a story behind it. Now this watch, uh, the Kakori 8 Down, it's... Uh, you can actually talk about the watch because when it's on your wrist, it gives you a lot of cues that are there on the dial and you can talk about the incident. You can actually have an audience enthralled for at least the next six to seven minutes. So that was the entire idea that people can talk. It has to be conversation starter without creating friction. Uh, so as a tagline, what we are thinking is our whole idea is uh, for a customer we're looking at people uh, 
to unheard as as in u n h e r d uh, we we not looking at targeting people who just want to wear a watch to show uh, what his status is we want to we want people to wear a watch because they comfortable with that they comfortable with the thought of that particular watch uh, so that's the entire thing as far as storytelling is concerned uh, now storytelling can happen in many ways in fact Uh, there was a gentleman who wanted to gift a watch to his daughter uh, so he wanted it personalized and uh, he said vikram can you put the my message there and i said fine his name was tg loves his daughter's name said but i need to do something different anybody can just do that write that and give it to you that particular uh, series of watches happened to be numbered so i was just thinking let me see what are the numbers available so we had the number 8 available that point of time so i just tweaked the case back so tg loves his daughter's name to and we took the 8 and flipped it around 90 degrees it became infinity so the message went out to his daughter was tg loves her to infinity stroke 100 so he was damn elated by that <laughs> if you like it please have a round of applause for him so small small things that we like to do uh, uh there was this gentleman uh, <coughs> so in the muslim community for some reason they they consider 7 at 6 to be auspicious or whatever uh, <coughs> so he wanted a watch i said let me see what special i can do for him so we had the number 72 available most of the watches were sold but luckily we had 72 available so i tweaked it a bit i just put 7 8 minus 6 स्ट्रोक हंड्रेड करके उसे दे दिया मतलब बहुत खुश हो गया वंडरफुल थैंक्स सो आई एम गोइंग टू वी गो टू कम बैक टू दैट इफ यू गेट द टाइम अर्जुन आई थिंक व्हेन यू रीड अबाउट आई थिंक यू टॉक अबाउट यू आर ट्राइंग टू गेट पीपल्स लाइफ लॉन्ग रिलेशनशिप विद फूड एक्सप्लोरेशन एंड देन द सेम वेबसाइट देन गोस आउट सेइंग वी डोंट पुट दिस वी डोंट पुट दिस वी डोंट पुट विनेगर वाटर वी डोंट सो इट्स अ लॉट ऑफ नोज एंड टू मी इट्स रियली आई थिंक यू डिफाइंड a brand or brand essence or whatever brand you don't know what model you use and you're obsessed with it saying that no one should stray it away that's my observation correct me if i'm wrong but you put the gui- guidelines red itni tikhi honi chahiye aise hona chahiye etc etc so my take to is to one t- take us to that process of how you can hard code it and second if i'm part of your product development team is it a boring job because ye mat karna wo mat karna ye nahi kar sakte wo nahi kar sakte so just talk a little bit about the brand essence and the guy and god lines around it yeah no appreciate that um so we had a particular thought in mind when we started off right we said um in our minds we said look there's indian companies that make hot sauce but there's no one making an indian hot sauce now you can call this semantics if you want to um but for by take it very seriously in the sense that you know what a tennessee whiskey is right like you know what a louisiana hot sauce is what a mexican hot sauce is you've heard of like japanese precision or like german engineering or whatever the case might be like these are all soft power right and when we were just thinking about like okay like what is india's soft power right like if you take away some of the negative things over population bureaucracy none of the fun stuff that you would really want to talk about the one thing that you'd ne- definitely be known for worldwide is having spicy food um and to have a country who is like known worldwide as having spicy food but there's not a single brand that you could tell me is like maybe the brand that could be a flag bearer of what is spicy food um i mean of course like we we we're the we're the largest exporters and consumers of spice in general of chilies in general um but where is that brand that is making that one particular global friendly product um that you can hang your hat on and say look this is emblematic of what that category can and could and should be um so we took this as a as as something that like look like we need to if we're going to define this category and we're going to say that indian hot sauce is a thing then we need to give it certain characteristics and if it doesn't have these characteristics we're not going to call it an indian hot sauce so so for us that was like it needs to be thick it needs to be rich textured it needs to be saucy not watery um it needs to have a complexity of flavors like 
there's a lot of things that you do about food that you don't normally think about, but you're subconsciously doing it. Like if you're having kebabs, like why is green chutney so special with kebabs? Like it's, it's, it's because there's a complementary but contrasting sort of taste to it, right? Um, there's certain things that you need the contrast. There's other way you need to double down on the complexity. Like you could take like a dal rice and put something really funky on it and it would be cool. Or you could take dal rice and take something simple and it could still be cool. But you need it to work together. So for us, like part of the decision making criteria of like when a particular sauce works or it doesn't is can it work with something as simple as like a cheese toast? And can it also work with something as complex with the smorgasbord of like masalas that we throw into every single like stir fry or like anything like that? Um, and, and, when it, and when we sort of felt that something checks those boxes, at that point in time, we're like, okay, cool, this is something that we could take to market. Now, we don't always agree on everything internally. Everyone's got different tastes and, you know, preferences. Me, personally, I'm not a fan of, not this Ajwain, but like Ajwain, <laughs> and like uh, Long and all these other fun things that people put in biryanis that absolutely drive me insane. With my luck, I don't know how, I always lands up in my bowl. Um, like, I'm constantly the guy that gets bitten by mosquitoes. I get the lychee in my biryani, like, and I'm just like, it drives me insane. So I was just like, how do we get rid of this stuff? So like, part of the inspiration of one of the masalas that we are making is, can I put the masala in here that gives you the essence that three quarters of my family wants in the biryani, but not the things to bite into that are exclusive to me. Um, and that's sort of one of the thought processes I go into. So there's like really bizarre sort of inspirations for why you do the things that you do, but then you don't get the opportunity to say something as ridiculous as this, right? Like, so if I had to encapsulate all of that into a sentence, we'll kind of go a very different way. But when you get an opportunity to talk like this, you kind of <laughs> like show some of the weirder aspects of why you do the things that you do. Um, but yeah, like that's maybe a little sure. bit of an insight into, um, why we do some of that. What was the second part of the question? Is it going to be boring to work in your NPD team? Oh, it's not. Um, you do get put into a box, but it's a really large box. Um, it's really funny with the folks who are on the panel today. Like, I mean, like, one of the examples I give to people, like, when, when they're sort of, like, interviewing with us, is they're just like, so what's it like? You know, like, what's a day at Nagin? And I'm just like, so we don't dance. Right? Like, <laughs> absolutely not. Like, I don't know where you read that. Like, I do know where you read that. But like that, we don't. Um, and then they're like, okay, cool. But like, what kind of job is it? Like, am I going to get to learn? Am I going to get? I'm just like, you know what? We don't make medical equipment. You know, like if if we decided to call the company Nagin, it's not because we're well, the Budakusa type of people, right? Like, I mean, the idea is to make food fun. Jesus. Um, uh, the idea is to make food fun, but not at the at the um, at the cost of, of feeling like you're a novelty product and you don't actually take it seriously. So I love some of the stuff that um, we are sharing about food over here. Like, I mean, the quality that needs to be top notch, the trust needs to be there. And then hopefully, if you do your job right, or even semi right, the, the hope and the expectation is that people will appreciate that when it comes to work, in this case food, we're super serious, but we don't take ourselves so seriously, we can have fun with it a little bit. Sure. So the goal is to sort of like show that and time will tell if that was a wise decision or not. But uh, for me, Nagin's never been the snake. Nagin's always been the feeling. Like it's a dance, it's a song, it's a TV show, it's a movie. But I think one thing that it is, is like not something that makes you do this. Or maybe it does. But like you're still smiling. Like it, it, it's not something that's really repulsive. Maybe a snake on your table would be. But the word Nagin always elicits like, oh, or like a smile. Like, but you, it's never like pure deadpan, like, you know, so I think creating some kind of emotion is important. And, you know, if we do a little bit of that, it's probably, probably going to serve us well. And to do a little bit of leg pulling, which I don't intend to, what caused it? A nagin dance? A join? Or? Obviously a nagin dance. <laughs> okay. Right. I, I, I guess we're time's up, Panish. Yeah. So, um, no questions, right? They just shortened the time for us. But I'm going to just leave a thought behind for the audience. And thanks a lot. Wonderful discussion. Uh, um, and since I work with some of the uh, startup and mentors, I, I, and it kind of resonates this to me, there are two things which I say successful organizations always have. Successful startups would go to the extent of saying, one, they have an audacity. If you notice, all of them 
if if you're not indians here you would have said ki maybe they are big global brands which they would be one day but that's the audacity with they carry that's the belief with they carry which is amazing and second right from uh, listening to uh, the spice stories here having those lunch conversations listening to your uh, customers abhishek uh, asking the dadi ma about halwa or asking your friend who wanted a uh, what did you call it malhar watch right i think they are clued on to customers and i always say that if anyone's clued on to customers failure will never come their way it'll only be success what these founders really bring in is a little bit of that audacity to say let's think big let's think global so big round of applause for all of them